Hey all, Kyle AA0Z here, and I'm on my way up to our club repeater cabinet, one of five that we have. We're having uh, some descents issues or some power output issues on our fusion repeater for the last week or so, and I got some time here to uh, dedicate got some test equipment here so I'm gonna go up and take a look to see what's uh, going on come with me and I will give you a tour of one of the st. Louis and suburban repeater cabinets stay tuned It's a bit loud in here, but I'm going to do my best here. So this is one of the main SLSRC cabinets. We've got a total of three repeaters in here. Up here at the top is the 146.85 Fusion. Oh, it's a fusion repeater, I'm sorry, it's an analog uh, repeater. It is controlled by this uh, CAT800 repeater controller. It's got connections in the back that come into that uh, repeater here. So you can see it's on fixed FM. And these, these are just the Yesu uh, Fusions, the DR1X. Down here is the repeater that we're having trouble with. And it is a DR2X, and it is uh, our 443.075 repeater, and it is having some descent issues, and that's why I'm up here. Here is a uh, web power switch by Digital Loggers that we haven't implemented yet, that we're going to uh, uh, be able to control these remotely, these uh, switched AC. Uh, receptacles. Here are our, our power supplies, power strip, some batteries for backup. You can see that they were put in October 2014. We're probably going to change them out this year in 2021. We've got our uh, connected to this guy in line is our CTCSS controller that comes in here and uh, gets decoded. Got a rig runner here that's connected to the network that controls power so we can do that remotely. We've got an old, old, old uh, 220 machine that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. So we're going to replace that in 2021. Here are our power over Ethernet injectors for our ubiquity dishes that are on the roof and they provide internet to all the rest of the repeater sites. And then in here is our cluster of pies. So this top one here is our all-star node 4105. The middle one there is our internal all-star node that is connected to our controller over here on port two, you can see it back there and I'll get show you that in a little bit that's our internal controller i'm sorry our inter internal all-star node 
that we use uh, for linking repeaters together. This uh, second from the top is our Unify controller that uh, runs the Unify software that uh, controls our network. And then finally, our All-Star node that is uh, pointed out to the public in our Echolink node, uh, 49485, and they all run in this Raspberry Pi stack. We've got a, a fan on here that I 3D printed a case for. And that cools it off. They're all being powered by this anchor power supply down here. Uh, the All-Star node that is connected to the CAT 800, which is connected to the 146.85 machine. That is connected to port two through this uh, DMK URI connection. It's just a serial connection. It comes out USB and it plugs into this uh, USB controller here. I'm sorry, the USB port, and that's to our internal All-Star node which is linked through Ethernet to our external uh, Ethernet, our all-star node, sorry. We've got our cable modem here from Charter. We've got our uh, router, Ubiquiti router here, and we've got a Ubiquiti switch that provides some PoE to some other things. And uh, it's just the, the main network. Here's the uplink here. And then we've got our duplexer for our 440 the duplexer for the 220s down here and then on this side so in this cabinet is our duplexer for our 146.85 machine and here is what the back looks like so this is our transmit antenna and our receive antenna for our 2 meter repeater here's the connection out of the back that goes into the CTCSS controller down over there and then it gets uh, the CTCSS is decoded and then piped directly back into the controller and then this cable is port 2 and comes over and into this cabinet and is plugged into the URI, which is plugged into the All-Star node. Uh, let's see, what else we got? You got the back of the, the rig runner here. So we've got power supply in right there. We've got uh, our 443.075 repeater. Our, here is our um, controller here. And we've got, uh, this is the power supply to the 146.85 repeater. Here is the DR2X. And it's, you can see it's got two transmit antennas and it's got two receive antennas. There's not two radios in here, there's only one radio. But it is able to transmit and receive on two different frequencies, one at control frequency or if you want to set it up as a control frequency, and the other one is a, is a primary. So we're only using the A side and the A side on this side. And then you've got the power supplies. Oh, it looks like one of the fans is out on one of the power supplies. Gonna have to fix that. Huh. All right. And a mess of power cables. This is the back of the duplexer. And all of those antennas are up in the ceiling there. I'm sorry, the, uh, the coax is up in the ceiling and comes down. Some of it is terminated here on that bus bar. The 443.075 is terminated there. Our two meter spare antenna is terminated there. So let's go outside and take a look at some of the antennas. 
first let's take a look at where it penetrates through and where it's grounded. So you can see we've got lightning arresters here. I don't know if you can see it, but this is our spare 440 antenna. Here is, uh, I'm not really sure what this antenna is. Here's our uh, two meter antenna. And then here is another spare. Here's our 220 spare 70 centimeter and our 146.85 repeater antenna. And they get penetrated through the wall there. across St. Louis to provide control, command and control, and the internet to some other repeater sites in the St. Louis area. That right there is our spare 440 antenna. That is our 220 antenna. And then that is our two meter antenna with a ubiquity disc on the bottom of it that shoots over to another repeater system and provides internet and command and control over there. So now we're on the roof here. And we've got some cell providers here. But right here is our 440 antenna that we're having issues with. We're, at, we're having issues with the machine, or it could be a descent issue. So, that's Clayton. Down there is the Arch, downtown St. Louis. Let's walk over, take a look at There is that ubiquity sector antenna that I was talking to you about. Here is the spare 440, which I might switch the 440 machine over to that antenna. And there is our two meter antenna. One of the highest points in St. Louis is right here. So we've got some pretty good range with our repeater systems on this building. I'm fortunate to have space up here. So let's go back inside and we will take a look at what's going on with that antenna and repeater. All right, I think I figured out what's going on with this repeater. Um, looks like we've got an antenna problem out on that spare antenna, or the, the antenna that it was on. We have a backup antenna, uh, so I flipped it to that antenna, which is uh, out there by that big condenser that I showed you. Put it in fixed digital, so it only is transmitting fusion, it's not transmitting FM, and I'll show you here. This is the new antenna that I connected up. Here is the old antenna that connects into this guy. So I will disconnect him. 
So at least we are some light over here. At least we are up and running for the time being. I don't have the right Oh, that fan kicks on when it's under load. I did not know that. Thought it was bad. You learn something new every day, don't you? So, we have put a Band-Aid on this. You can see that I've got my phone here that is uh, remote controlled into Chrome which is connected to the Wires X PC, and it's on America's Link right now. And someone is talking. I got my HT here. It's coming through loud and clear. And if I turn the volume up. This thing never seems to arrive. You know, these boat people coming. Sounds like a British station. I wonder if Callum's on there. So, that is the tour of the 85 and the 443 and the two, the 1.75, the 220 machine. Everything looks good. Cabinet is still here, so it was a successful trip. That's it from the repeater cabinet and the top of St. Louis, 73.